it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're gonna learn how to make a fun scarf and cow using the new Loop It yarn from Red Heart. This is a finger looping type of yarn, and you may have seen this kind of popping up in the craft stores. This is a fun yarn that is a strand of loops, and instead of using hooks and needles, you use your fingers to put the loops into the next loop. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Now, for our scarf, um, we're gonna make a scarf, but you can also turn it into a cowl, and I'll show you how to do that later on in the video. But I'm gonna be using two balls of the Loop It. Each ball of this is 7.6 yards or seven meters, 3.5 ounces, 100 grams, it's 100% polyester, and I'm calling this the fluffy cupcake scarf or cowl because of the colors I'm using, it just reminds me of like fluffy frosting on a cupcake. So this color is called tickle pink and purple. It's kind of a mix of white, purple, and pink. And then this one is called, I have the label here, this is called in the pink. So we're gonna be using two balls of this and I'm gonna be showing you in this video how to get started, how to work rows with the Loop It, and then also how to transition from one ball of yarn to the next ball of yarn as well. And then finally, how to finish off your scarf and then if you wanna turn your scarf into a cowl or an infinity, scarf type of thing. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. For this project, you'll just need the two balls of the Loop It yarn and a pair of scissors and your fingers, and that's it. So let's get started. Okay, let's start with this variegated one first. So what you'll wanna do is take the yarn labels off of your yarn and put those aside. So then what you'll have to do is see I'm sort of like fluffing this up because it's gonna help us find the end. So here is the end of our yarn ball here. And you're just gonna to wanna to pull out a little bit of yarn here. Now you can see it's a strand just full of loops, okay? Now I got this tip from Marley Bird on the Marley Bird YouTube channel, so special thanks to Marley Bird. Um, but she starts off by cutting a couple of the loops to give yourself a nice tail, okay? So what we're gonna do is, see our first loop here? You're just gonna go in with your scissors and trim and see how it becomes a tail. Let's do that to a couple of the loops so we get a nice tail and that will help us weave it in later. Okay, cut the next loop and then cut a third loop just for good measure, just like that. So now we have a nice tail to get started. Okay, and then before we get started, I also want to give a special shout out also to Red Heart for sending this yarn, this brand new Loop It yarn, so that I can share it with all of you as well. So special thanks to them. Okay, so once you have your tail, you want to determine how many loops you want your row to be. Now I want to do something with a little bit of nice width so it's very fluffy and comfy. So we're going to do 10 loops across, okay? Now if you do five loops, it'll be narrower. If you do 20 loops, it'll be wider and so forth. So go ahead and kind of put your tail out here and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay? So this is gonna be uh, kind of the base of what we're working on here, okay? As a side note, I'm doing the variegated yarn. If you'd rather do the solid yarn, if it helps you see better, uh, feel free. I kind of like how the loops are different colors. It kind of helps keep me straight. But if you find that the solid is a little bit easier for you to see, definitely you know, use the solid instead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay this flat on the table, or if you have a lap uh, that you can lay your work on it, it does help it help you uh, to keep things nice and flat. So if you can lay it on your lap or a table, um, it certainly makes it easier. Okay, so you wanna keep your 10 here and I'm just gonna put my finger here to kind of separate it. Um, and then what I like to do is sort of put the strand up top here and kind of feed it down into my work, okay? So what we're gonna do once again is work in a zigzag and, and as I do this, you'll kind of see what I mean. So take the first loop or the next loop that you come to rather and put it through this loop here, the first loop of our row and just put it through there just like that, okay? Now take the next loop and put it through. Take the next loop and put it through. And you'll wanna work slowly and carefully when you begin because you don't wanna forget any loops because it'll put like a, a weird loop out in the front of your work, like a random extra loop, okay? So just be really careful. Keep everything nice and flat 
and sometimes the loops twist around so just be careful not to miss any of them okay now this will feel if you've never done finger knitting or finger crochet this will feel kind of odd at first without using a hook or needles but it's super easy in concept and you'll be able to pick it up pretty quickly it felt a little bit um, unusual to me when I started as well and sometimes just make sure the loops aren't twisted around when you work okay so here is our last loop so we've worked our first row now what I like to do see it looks a little jumbly right now I like to go and kind of pull these loops up pull them upward and it kind of like tightens up your work a little bit and gets everything nice and neat and kind of laying flat the way it's supposed to see how that looks when you pull them up a little bit okay now we're gonna start the next row so we're gonna work through this and once we get through this ball of yarn I'm going to show you how to transition onto the next ball of yarn but we're not quite there yet okay so you're gonna work the next row the same way now did you notice how I just left everything on the table as is I didn't flip anything now if you start flipping your work um, you're gonna get like uh, uh, like a little ridge in your work like a garter stitch we're doing stockinette stitch so if you're a knitter those terms will be familiar um, if you're not a knitter that's like those the flatter uh, iconic V's that you see in knitting the garters where you have uh, like the little ridges or bumps in your work okay so let's move on to the next row again I like to have my strand kind of going out the top here so grab the next loop and just work that loop and then we're just going to work these loops all the way across now I would focus at first on just being really careful that everything is going where it should I wouldn't worry about speed yet just this is just a nice relaxing project see how I'm just passing all the loops through being careful not to forget any I was doing a sample piece uh, prior to this video and I left a loop out and it was just this big loop sticking out of the front and it, it didn't look very nice so just be careful not to leave it leave any loops out okay and then already we're at the end of our row okay so once again take your loops and kind of straighten them out and it's helpful to to recount make sure you have ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. just make sure you have the same number every time okay and now we're getting some nice flat it almost looks like tiles it's really interesting okay and then we can work on our next row let's do another row or two together and then we're going to kind of work on our own through the rest of this ball and we'll rejoin when we get to another color so let's go pick up a little bit of speed and work the next two rows a little bit more quickly okay so we're going to do the next loop next loop next loop and I apologize for my hands kind of being in the way when I have a hook or needles in my hand it's kind of my hands are out of the way and it's a little bit easier to see but with this project your hands are right there in your work you're just right in the yarn which is really fun because the yarn is super soft if you haven't had a chance to feel this yarn yet in the store definitely go to the store and give it a little squish test okay and now I'm at my last loop okay so there you go now once again I like to give my my little loops a tug just so they're all nice and flat and they do lay pretty flat once you do that okay so now we're getting some length so we haven't really um, put a whole bunch of rows in there but we do have a couple inches so far okay let's do this last row together and then we'll uh, take a moment to work through the rest of the ball okay so one more time just keeping everything flat now you notice I haven't moved this project at all it's been laying on the table the entire time okay and I'm just putting all these loops through and once you get a little bit of length on your project it is easier to see everything it, it does look to me it's a little jumbled up at first until you get a little bit of length on there okay and just work through being very careful not to miss any of the loops I know I keep saying that but I definitely did miss a loop and it I had to like pull it apart and start over okay so just two more whoops two more loops on our row here now let's straighten all of these loops the loops that we just sent through okay 
okay? So we've added some length onto our project and it looks very pretty. It's a nice kind of abstract pattern. Now I just wanna show you the back. The back of it looks like um, garter stitch or reverse stockinette if you wanna get technical. But you see the nice little ridges. Now you can wear this this side facing outward if you want that little bit of texture or the flatter side, it's totally up to you. Again, this is a nice, easy going kind of project. All right, so what I'm gonna do is continue to add rows to my loops and then we'll rejoin once we get towards the end of this ball and I'm gonna show you how to join on the next ball, okay? One more thing I wanted to mention before we continue is that Sometimes we can't get all of this done in one sitting and we need to put this down and take a break or if you need to come back the next day or whatever. So if you're afraid about your loops getting pulled apart, um, you can just lay it on something and leave. If, but if you're worried about it getting shifted or moved around or if you need to travel with your project, which so many of us do in waiting rooms and watching sports activities and everything, if you need to kind of have a more permanent storage solution for this, just grab a large hook or a dowel rod or a chopstick or a knitting needle or what have you and just run your hook right through all of these loops like this. And then you'll be able to put it in a bag or a basket or what have you and, and you can kind of store your project, okay? So you can just kind of like slip it onto something like this and now your loops um, will be safe and sound. Now obviously these could slip off the edge but uh, this will help keep them uh, more in place than just kind of laying on a table. So I just wanted to um, give you a little tip there for that. So we're gonna keep working, we'll rejoin in just a moment and switch balls of yarn. Okay, so I've been looping it and now we're ready to join on a new ball of yarn, which I have right here. We're gonna go on to the pink. Now I could have probably done some striping to kind of break up the variegated and the solid to do more stripes, but I'm gonna make mine more of like a color block just to keep things super easy for us. Okay, so I have a little tail here. Now to continue on to the next row, you're only gonna need a couple of loops. So I'm gonna choose these first three and then the other three, see I have three more at this end here. I'm just gonna cut those to create a tail. Remember how we created our tail at the beginning of the row um, when we began? We're gonna cut these last three loops to give us a little bit of a tail here. Now this is um, what how the folks at Red Heart recommending going to the next ball of yarn. So I'm gonna show you um, straight from the yarn company what they suggest. And if you have a little crumbs, that's okay. Okay, so let's get everything all straightened out. Now we have our first three loops and we're gonna join it on to the new row. So just get all your loops nice and straight. And then let's find the end here. Now I just had it a minute ago and now I can't find it. It's all wrapped up. Okay, so once you have your, your end of your new ball of yarn, you're going to, we need a tail on this end too. So go ahead and cut about three of the loops from the new ball of yarn, just right down the middle. See how I'm doing that? And it just opens up that. And just be really careful so you don't cut too much. Okay, so now we have a tail here. So we're gonna do the same thing as when we start. So just kind of lay this up here. Now they recommend, the uh, designers at Red Heart recommend taking a couple loops of the old strand and layering them with the new strand. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So kind of like, flip. remember we were working in a zigzag row to row. So kind of flip this over and line the these three loops with the first first three loops of your new row, okay? That was kind of a mouthful. Um, just to try to get them as nice and neat as possible. Okay, then you're gonna take the first couple of loops of the new row, and this tail, we can weave this in later. I'm gonna show you how to do this at the end of the video. But you're gonna take the first couple of loops and put them under here, okay? So we're gonna kind of stack everything together, okay? This is gonna make a lot more sense in a moment. The first time I did this, I was a little bit wondering how this was all gonna 
work out. Okay, so take the first loop of your new row and send these bottom two loops. Remember how we stacked them? Send them both through that first loop, just like that. So you'll have two loops in there, okay? Now do that with the next loop. This is why you don't wanna to do too many loops. That's why I thought three would be good. So send those two loops through the next one. And then it's a little fiddly trying to keep it all, but you wanna keep it stacked sort of like a sandwich. Send the next two loops through that next loop like that, okay? Now we are completely on the new ball of yarn. We're gonna finish this row and then come back over and I'm gonna show you how to deal with these stacked loops over here. Okay, so you can just go ahead and work your row as you normally would, except we have the new ball of yarn that we're working through. Okay, so just send those loops right on through with the new ball of yarn, okay? We have more, again, it helps to lay it on the table. I think that keeps it the straightest, okay? Now, almost to the end here, you're just gonna take that last loop just like that. So you're kind of just working it the same way we've been doing, except for the stacking part back here, okay? So then come back and work your next row. Just keep going with the strand. See how I'm just coming right back across the row now, another little tip I wanted to share with you. This is the knit stitch that we're doing. I didn't really go into too much detail at the beginning just to try to get the technique down. But see how we're doing? This is nice and flat with those iconic knit Vs. This is the knit stitch that we're doing. There are other uh, stitches that you can do. You could do a purl stitch. You could do ribbing, all kinds of other things. And I'll provide a link. If you hop on over to the Fiberflux blog, I'll put a link on how to learn some of these other stitches. But for this project, we're keeping it super simple. So when you do your loops to keep it nice and smooth looking like this, you wanna take your, this is your new row, this is the working yarn, send it through the back of the loop. See that? I've kind of been doing it, but I didn't really say to send it through the back loop. So see, I'm just sending it through that back loop like that each time. Because, let me just show you something. If I sent it through the front of that loop, See how it's gonna give you a little bit of a, a ridge in the front? And that might be what you're after, but we're gonna try and keep it all the same. So always send it through the back. That was my other tip I wanted to share. Okay, now we're back at the area where we joined on the new ball of yarn. So all you're gonna do is simply take those two loops from before and just send them, wait a minute, where are we? Oh yeah, okay, <laughs> I got myself twisted here. Send this loop through those two loops and pull up on it like that. See, now we only have one loop, okay? Do the same thing. Take the next loop here, send it through the back. Take the next section and send it through, okay? So we've completely added our new ball of yarn, okay? Now, because I'm going from variegated to solid, I'm gonna have more of a color blocking effect, but um, for learning purposes, you know, this is um, a nice, easy, simple project. Another tip I wanted to share before we get too far along is as you're working each row, when I'm working a row, I like to flip it over and look at the back and make you see how the back looks a little bit different. Make sure there's no random loop sticking up. That means you left one off of your working or you kind of skipped over. So just uh, check it every so often and make sure you're not skipping any loops either. Okay, let's go ahead and work one more row together and then we'll break off and continue with our scarf or cowl, whatever you like it to be. And I'm gonna show you how to do the cowl at the end of the video, okay? So I'm just bringing the loops through. Remember to get this knit stitch, send the loop through the back of the loop on the row, okay? And I am just going to keep working on my scarf slash cowl until I'm out of yarn, okay? So it's gonna be like a longer cowl, like an infinity scarf. You can kind of double it up. It's very, very cozy. And this yarn is very kind of fuzzy and fluffy like 
chenille or something like that. It's very nice, soft stuff for around the neck. Okay, so now I finished a row and I'm just gonna peek at the back real quick, make sure there's no random, now I do have tails, we'll deal with those later. Just make sure I don't have any random loops sticking out though. Okay, so you can get all your loops straightened out. I am going to continue working on my project and then in just a bit, we're gonna rejoin and I'm gonna show you how to, if you like, how to connect the ends of your project to create a cowl and also how to deal with all these ends. So stay tuned and uh, we'll finish up our project. Okay, so I've been working the solid section of the fluffy cupcake scarf and I just have a little bit of yarn left. So I'm gonna show you how to bind off. Now, if you're a knitter, this is a familiar term. This just simply means we're gonna get these loops finished off so there's no more active stitches on our scarf, okay? When we're done that, I'm gonna show you how to seam this together if you wanna make it into a cow or infinity scarf. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we finished off a row and I'm ready to work another row. Um, so instead of working it like we've been doing, I'm gonna show you how to bind off these loops. Okay, so I've been working the pink section of the fluffy cupcake scarf, and now we're ready to bind off. So I have just a little bit of yarn left here that I've saved. And if you're a knitter, binding off will seem like a familiar term. If you've never knit before, it's okay. It just means we're taking these active stitches here and we're gonna finish them off, okay? So what you're gonna do is work the first two loops of your row. So put the loop through the first loop, and then the next loop, work the next loop. Same thing we've been doing. But then we're going to take that, that loop we just worked and put it through the first loop, just like that, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is work the next loop of our row and then take that loop and put it through that first loop here. And then do the same thing all the way across. Work the next loop, then send that loop through the loop that's already been worked. And then we're gonna to go to the next loop, work the next loop, and then send that loop through the loop that's already on, that we've already worked. Let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay, then we're going to work the next loop. We're gonna just do this all the way across. Send that loop through the loop that you've already worked. Always checking the back to make sure you don't miss any loops. Work the next loop. Send that loop through the loop that you've already worked. I like to give them a little tug each time because there's a lot of stuff sitting on here. Work the next loop. Put that loop through the loop that you've already worked. And then we just have a few stitches left. Work the next loop. Put that loop through the loop that you've already worked. And finally, we're at the end. Work that very last loop. Put the loop through the one you've already worked, okay? So the top is finished off. No more loops across the top, except for this one loop here. So then what we need to do is to create a tail. So I'm just gonna cut the yarn, okay, and then cut that very last loop, just being careful not to cut your work, just the tail part, okay? So now you have a little bit of a tail. It could be two loops, three loops, it doesn't matter. Okay, the last thing you wanna do is just send this tail through the last loop and just pull it gently uh, so that the yarn does not snap, okay? So our scarf is complete. Now, of course, you can keep this as a scarf and it's very fluffy and cozy, or you can make this into a cowl or infinity scarf. And it, that is super easy to do. So all you want to do is turn your scarf inside out um, being careful not to twist it, unless you'd like a decorative twist, and that's totally up to you as well. But turn your scarf inside out, and then we want to create a strand that we will be weaving, okay? So you may have strands. I'm just gonna make these, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay, so you may have a tail that's long enough to seam these two ends together, um, I'm not really thinking mine's long enough, so I'm going to show you how to create uh, a piece of yarn. It's the same thing we did with when we made our tail. So you're just going to cut 
Um, now, obviously, if you want to make this into an infinity scarf um, or cowl, you'll need to save some yarn over here, okay? So I didn't work till the very, very end of the yarn. I saved a little bit so I could show you how to do this. But we're going to create a strand of this yarn that's not loopy, just enough to get the end seam. Now, our scarf isn't very wide, so we don't need a huge strand. And if you cut too big of a strand, then... Um, you'll be pulling and pulling and pulling it through. Okay, so so this is fine. This is about 12 inches or so. All right, so line your ends up, and you might get some little crumbs, that's okay. So line, okay, so line your edges up, just like a little sandwich, and then you're going to send the tail in. Whoops. Now sometimes it can kind of snap off like that, that's okay. Just pull it through. Just be very careful not to break it because it, it is a little bit, the strand is fragile. But once you get the ends woven in, it'll be fine. Okay, so just go through. Now your sandwich edges will be a little bit different. This is where we started and it just kind of starts nice and clean with the stitches. This will have a little bit of a braided edge. So you'll want in the braided edge, the bind off, you want to go through both strands. At the top, you'll see a series of V's. You want to go through both of those V's. Just pull it through very gently. And then go through the top of the other layer where we began. If you're not familiar with knitting, um, we call that the cast on. Okay, and just pull it through nice and gentle. We're just going through each one of these V's and across the tops of the stitches of the other side, okay? And this yarn, as a side note, is very fluffy and forgiving. So any, um, it's not lined up perfectly or you know you miss something here and there, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the yarn is very forgiving. <laughs> Okay, which is always a good thing because sometimes, especially when we're doing this by hand, for me it's not, I'm normally using a needle, so it feels a little bit unusual to me to do this by hand. Okay, we're just going into both layers here with our seaming. Okay, we're almost to the end, and then I'm going to show you how to weave in the ends. Go in the top of that braid or V rather. Pull your strand through and we're almost to the end. Just taking it all the way to the edge so we don't have any sloppy corners. Okay, and now we're at the edge. Now we, okay, so we're just gonna tie these two ends together. Now with this yarn, you can do one of two things. You can cut the tails flush and they kind of like blend into the yarn. Let me scoot all this stuff out of the way. Or you can take your fingers and just kind of weave it in and out of some of these stitches along the back. Make sure your piece is still inside out when you do this so that it doesn't show through onto the front because we did get some really pretty uh, stitch work with the loops. Okay and then if you if you like you can just kind of tuck it in there it's not an exact science, and again, this yarn is very forgiving. So, you can either cut them flush, or, now this one kind of goes to the front, so I'm gonna kind of weave this one back to the back, and that way, it'll be a little bit more camouflaged, okay? Now, any ends that you see all over your scarf, now see we had where we joined our colors, we have some here too. Now again, you can cut those flush and they kind of disappear, or you can weave them in, whatever kind of situation you're presented with, okay? So our fluffy cupcake scarf is complete. Now I've turned mine into an infinity scarf, so this is gonna be really cushy to kind of wrap around the neck and it's gonna feel like a cloud. So that is the fluffy cupcake scarf 
slash cow using the Loop It yarn from Red Heart. I had so much fun making this scarf and I hope you do too. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.